So on the table today, you can see that in addition to a puzzle, I also have an array of craft supplies. And in this puzzle is more than just puzzle pieces. So today we're going to be making a 3D Christmas tree out of a jigsaw puzzle. Welcome to the Karen Puzzles annual holiday special. I am so curious what is in this box. So let's go ahead and open it up. <laughs> Okay, so before I open this up, here's what we're working with. So basically, we're going to put together these Christmas tree halves, and I believe there are four of them. And then it comes with some sort of center connector to make them into this 3D tree. And it also comes with these ornaments, which kind of snap onto the ends of the tree. This was released by Bits and Pieces in 1997. I basically found it by going onto eBay and just searching for interesting looking holiday puzzles. But here's the thing, they have all of these instructions on the back about how to glue the puzzle so that you can assemble it into a 3D tree. But I look at this picture and the pieces look really thick. They almost look like they're made of foam. And if that's the case, they would probably hold together on their own. Like, I don't know if you would still have to glue it. All right, what do we have? <laughs> Let's take a look. Okay, these pieces are definitely not made of foam. They're definitely just regular cardboard. Um, it did come with puzzle glue, but I kind of thought since uh, this is from 1997, maybe I should just buy some new puzzle glue instead of relying on this one, which is what, almost, no, more than 20 years old. Then we've got this bag of pieces. We have this bag of pieces. And these are gonna be the plastic connectors that hold the four sections together. So I don't know if there is a difference between these two. Uh, actually, I think I do know if there's a difference between these two. So I'm pretty sure they just give you two copies of the same puzzle because you're gonna end up with two each of the same halves of the Christmas tree. And it says it includes two of each of these ornaments. And then on the back, it says to discard the extra star ornament. So I think they just package up everything that's here on the cover twice. And so you get two of them and that's gonna make a 3D Christmas tree. So should I mix them together? I kind of think I shouldn't, <laughs> just because if it is the exact same image and the exact same cut, it might be cut like a little bit off on the image. And so I'm just gonna end up looking at it super closely, trying to make sure even if the piece is correct, that the image lines up perfectly. That just sounds like a nightmare. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna give myself a little Christmas present and do it the easy way. <laughs> So I guess I can just set this one aside for later. So the pieces are definitely made of cardboard, not foam, um, and they are double-sided. So I think I am going to have to glue this. A little fun fact about me is that I've never glued a jigsaw puzzle before, which is crazy because puzzles are all I do. But if I want to save a puzzle, I will uh, use painter's tape on the back. I've done that with all of my giant puzzles. And you can't tape this one because it is double-sided. I guess I could have done like clear contact paper or packing tape, but I just didn't think that would look very nice. So I'm gonna do it. I think I'm actually gonna have to glue this one. But first, before I get to that, I am getting a little hungry. So I think all of us are super busy during the holidays. Well, today's video is sponsored by Factor so that you can at least cross meal prepping off your list. There is so much that goes into making a meal, prepping, grocery shopping, 
cooking, storing the leftovers, doing dishes. Well, Factor delivers fresh and never frozen meals directly to your door. They are ready in only two minutes. So all you have to do is heat them up, um, optionally transfer them to a real plate and then enjoy. I actually did use Factor before they reached out to me to sponsor these videos and I loved it. It is so perfect for someone like me who is only feeding myself when you're not cooking for a family or like a group and also you're not good at cooking. <laughs> It is really hard to eat a variety of healthy foods. But with Factor, I have all of these full meals ready to go, and they're really good. I don't think I've ever had a Factor meal that I didn't like. So Factor is owned by HelloFresh, who also own Green Chef, who I worked with before, but this is like dinner in easy mode, no cooking required. <laughs> That's exactly what I need. So the way it works is they put up a new menu every week and then you can choose from over 35 options and they have different categories like calorie smart, vegan and veggie, protein plus, and more. So lots of good meals to choose from. I'm kind of a picky eater. I'm not as bad as I used to be, but even still, I have always managed to find plenty of meals on there that I know I'm going to enjoy. So if you want to try it out, you can go to factor75.com or click the link down in the description and use code PUZZLES50 to get 50% off at your first Factor box. So now that I'm well fed, Let's get back to the puzzle. Okay, is it just me or are these pieces really beautiful? Since it's double-sided, you don't get half the pieces with just cardboard. So when you look at this, it just looks so fun and festive. And I love this illustration style that was popular in the 90s. Uh, just to give credit, the artwork is by Lynn Katz. Oh no, Santa's already put together. I'm gonna take him apart and redo that myself later. And then even though this is double-sided, you can tell by the bevel on the side which side goes up and which side goes down. Like this edge is a lot sharper and then this edge is a lot rounder. And if we divide 750 in half, it's really not that many pieces, so I, I actually think I might put the box away before I get started. Just uh, hang out down there for a little while. Okay, where is this piece? How am I not seeing it? I don't have that many colorful pieces left. I feel like I would have seen it swimming around in these pieces over here. I did get most of the ornaments done. So now I'm gonna work on all of the ornaments that are just on the flat uh, Christmas tree parts.
Okay, so I got pretty much all of the ornaments done, but now we can see how uh, how big this is going to be because I wasn't really sure. Uh, I still have not found that last piece of the star. Luckily, the other bag is going to have an extra star because I really don't think it's here. So I'm less than 40 minutes into it and I am just moving through this. This is really not that difficult. Although now, now I think I got to the hard part, so maybe I shouldn't speak too soon. <laughs> Okay, so that took me about an hour and 20 minutes, but I really wasn't trying to rush. Unfortunately, this piece never turned up. Uh, I checked the floor, I checked the bag that I had emptied out. It's definitely not in here. But luckily, uh, this is the piece that we get two of and we only need one. So hopefully it's not missing from the other bag. So here's the entire thing, really pretty, not too difficult of a puzzle. I think it was a really good difficulty level. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but it's the same thing printed on the back. So even if I did it from the other side, you'd basically be doing the exact same puzzle again. So uh, there's not really any sense in doing it again from the back, but I do have to do it again in order to get the other sections to make my 3D Christmas tree. I'm not used to doing the exact same puzzle twice in a row. So I guess this is an opportunity to see if I can beat my time now that I'm more familiar with the image and now that I'll be referring back to the puzzle that I already did so I'm not going in not knowing what the image is gonna look like. So okay, this is gonna be fun. Let's see how fast I can do the second half. Okay, so yesterday was all about puzzling. Today is all about assembling. So the second half of this puzzle took me 53 minutes and 13 seconds. So I definitely knocked off a lot of time from that first one. Although 53 minutes is still kind of a lot for a 375 piece puzzle. So, it is fairly difficult, but not in a frustrating way. It was really fun. I really enjoyed this as a puzzle. I do wish if I were the one designing this and I had unlimited budget, I do wish they could have done a different illustration for the second half instead of just giving you the exact same puzzle twice. But I'm sure it was like a budget thing and a manufacturing thing. so. I get it. But if they were different, you could have mixed it all together and done it as one 750 piece puzzle and not two 375 piece puzzles. 
I'm just saying, just saying. <laughs> um, luckily, I do have all of the pieces for this second star though, so we will be able to finish it. We do have a complete star. So I feel like the big question that I had is whether you really would have to glue it or not. And the pieces hold together a little bit, like I was able to move sections around, but you definitely could not pick this entire thing up. And that's kind of a shame because I really did like the puzzle and now once I glue it, I'm never gonna be able to do it again and I'm taking it out of circulation forever. Nobody will ever be able to do it again. Again, if I was the one designing this, I would have made it out of foam or cork or something that really locks together so that you don't have to glue it. But I am going to glue it. Just one, one more thing though before I do. I just really quick wanted to give a shout out to these really interesting and beautiful piece shapes. Like you have these split pieces or these split connectors. I love it when puzzles do that. You have some funky pieces like that. You have some false edges in the middle. Still a bunch of regular puzzle piece shapes, which meant it wasn't too frustrating, but just some really interesting stuff going on, especially around the edges where you have this custom shape cut out. Anyway, okay, I think I've gotten all the shots that I need to of this puzzle. I hate this for a video because if I need to go back and pick something up of putting the puzzle together, now I can't. I just have to hope I got it all. <laughs> all right, let's glue it. Let's glue it. Ah, I don't want to glue it, <laughs> but I need to finish this project. I'm going to see it through. Okay, I got everything rearranged on the boards and ready to be glued. Uh, these boards that I'm gluing on are just big pieces of plastic that I pulled out of uh, poster frames, like cheap poster frames that I got on Amazon. So it's plastic and not glass. I did a little test with some of the glue and the glue just peels right up. So I figured it was a good surface. So this is the glue that the puzzle comes with. Um, this is a look at what the bits and pieces puzzle glue looked like in the 90s. It's interesting that they didn't even print a label. It's literally just paper that is taped onto this tube. Um, here you can see all of the instructions that they include. And so if we open it up, is this at all even like, oh, it is liquid. Oh my gosh, it's very gummy. I mean, it smells like glue. It's probably, it would probably be okay, but I thought the texture might have uh, dried out a little. So I bought some new glue. So I got the Mod Podge Puzzle Saver. To be honest, I don't really know what is different about this than other Mod Podges or other PVC glues, but I figured if it's advertised specifically for puzzles, it would probably work for this project. Oh man, that, that actually has a really strong smell. I feel like I'm gonna have to open a window while I work on this. <laughs> what did they put in here that's different from other glues? I, I don't know. Ah, I hate this. I hate doing something so permanent like this. <laughs> and also it's the first time I've ever glued a puzzle. So I really hope I'm doing it right. All right, here we go. Okay, I've done it. I've done it. No going back now. Okay, wait, actually. Actually, this is really satisfying. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right. It's been another hour and a half. I'm hoping that these are dry enough that I can flip them over and then also put a coat on the back. Hopefully they're not glued down too badly onto this plastic. Wait, this is really satisfying. Hang on. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> okay. It totally worked. Okay, I think I'm finally gonna finish this project today. I swear I spent just as much time gluing as I did actually puzzling. And then this morning I just spent another hour just trimming off all of the extra glue from around the edges. <laughs> But we finally made it. We have our finished Christmas tree sections. We have all our ornaments. So let's, let's try to assemble this thing. So the puzzle comes with four of these plastic connectors. It's basically just a plus sign with little grooves that you uh, slide onto these Christmas tree parts. It doesn't feel all that flexible, so... Um, all right, I guess we can try it out. Let's see, on the back of the box, it, I mean, it basically says to just put them evenly spaced, so. I mean, do you slide it on or do you go just in from the side? Uh, oh no, oh no. Wait, why is that so, okay, wait, no, it's going, it's going. Is it going? This is very tight. But now what, do I do all four on the first one and then, or do I put, all four pieces into this first bracket. I think I'm gonna put all four brackets on this first piece. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> we're, just, we're just making this up as we go. Hmm. Okay, I'm running into a problem. So I just tried to put this guy on there, but you can see there's some extra plastic still attached and that didn't just like fall off as I try to put it onto the tree. So if I don't want my tree to be lopsided, I think I'm gonna have to go in and try to clean those up. Like if I have my tiny little shears, can I just cut them away? Okay, that, that kind of worked. All right, I guess we're adding another step to this project. <laughs> Okay, I got all four brackets attached to the first piece of the tree. Wait, oh my God, wait. This is, uh, <laughs> I got the first one attached. How do I get the second one attached? Uh, oh my God. This is an, uh, the most annoying project I've ever done. Also, having my phone here to record is not helping. Oh my god, no, no. The tree just started breaking apart as I tried to maneuver this into this bracket. Wait, I don't know what to do. Um, what if I try just sliding this all the way down the brackets instead of trying to shove them right onto it? Um, okay, new plan. I really thought this was gonna be easy. Okay, that took 
a million years and I literally for a while just sat and stared at the wall and tried to think about what to do. So I got it standing, but I only have one single bracket in here because it was hard enough to get all of these um, like connected to one. There's no way I'd be able to get them all if I had four of them on there. It's just way too tight. But what I don't love is that since there is a little extra space in here, you end up with like, even if I had a bracket in here, you would still be able to see through this because they're not perfectly flush with each other. So what I'm thinking is that I might just take out the bracket entirely and just go in with some packing tape so that at least they'll all be flush with each other. <laughs> at this point, I don't know what else to do. Okay, I don't even care about any shininess that you get from the tape. That looks so much better and it was so much easier. You do still have a little bit of a gap here in the middle because uh, these, these edges weren't perfectly straight so they weren't totally lining up, but I think that's okay. It's a lot cleaner looking than uh, the brackets were. So hopefully this part will be a little easier. Um, all of these ornaments have these little notches. So theoretically, they should go right here onto the ends of the branches. Okay, let's see if one single thing in this assembly goes according to plan. Ah, no! No! Come on, stay, stay. No! <laughs> Do we need this one? Come on. Oh, okay, okay. One of them is staying. That one, that feels solid. That is staying on there. Okay, I got some of them on there, and then these are the ones that are too loose. Interestingly, we have a lot of doubles, so I really think it was just a manufacturing error that these notches on these ornaments were just cut a little too wide. Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm done. I am done. <laughs> Once I finish this video, I will be on my Christmas break. So, it's good enough. <laughs> this project started, like the puzzle was way up here and then every single step of the assembly just went down and down and down and down and now we are all the way down here. I just, I'm not even gonna bother trying to get these ornaments attached. We have enough where it looks okay from one side and that's good enough for me. And honestly, I don't even think it looks that nice. Like the problem when you have only four panels is that you can't really see all of them unless you're walking all the way around it. You need this to be a lot more dense for it to look good. So you would need probably 
eight or 16 of these panels for it to really look good. And here's the thing, I've made Christmas trees out of cardboard before. When I was doing DIY videos for HGTV Handmade, I made this cardboard Christmas tree, which has a lot of branches that uh, come out at a right angle, and there are eight different segments. And so it really feels a lot more full than something like this, which is just four flat segments. And also, unless you get super up close, you can't even tell that it's made of a puzzle. And like, <laughs> I look at the picture that's on the box and clearly that was a prototype that was not the finished puzzle because it's clearly made of foam like a Puzz 3D would be. And so everything is much more flush against each other. It stands up really well. The ornaments are really gripping on there. And then you look at it in person made of cardboard and it looks much thinner, like much, everything is a little farther apart from each other. It just looks a little more sparse. So if they had sold the one that was actually on the box, I actually think that would be a lot better. Oh, and then my other complaint about this puzzle is that the pieces no longer fit in the box. All of the tree pieces are way too big to put back in here. So if you want to keep everything together year to year, you, you can't do that. Okay, so I was pretty much done with this video. And then last night I had a brainstorm. What if you put this tree against a flat wall and then you had the two sections coming out I think that looks so much better than having the four evenly spaced all the way around in a circle. I also added a tree skirt and some real ornaments and some gifts. So I think styling it with actual like 3D decorations really helps bring this to life. Also, I realized that if you bought two of these, you could use all of the panels to really make a much more uh, full tree all the way around. So I think just like those dollar store crafts, you have to think of this as sort of the starting point. And then if you add a lot of extra stuff, you can make it look nice. So, okay, here's what I want to know in the comments. What is your philosophy on gluing puzzles? Do you do it so that you can have them up on display? Do you not do it so that you can uh, put the puzzle together multiple times? Um, if you would like to know how to tape a puzzle together instead of gluing it, which is way less messy and less time consuming. I have an entire video about that. I'll link it down in the description. And if you wanna see all of my Karen puzzles at Christmas specials, I'm gonna link all of those down in the description too. So a huge thank you for watching my videos this year coming along on this puzzling journey with me. I have so many ideas of videos that I want to make next year. But first, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. So I'm gonna go and I will see you guys in the new year.